Welcome back to Afternoon Express. I hope that you are having a glorious Monday. We are back with singer Tanki Mamabolo, cancer survivor Sam Stewart, and Lynette Mutharay from the Chalk Foundation. And I'm so glad that we've got a little bit of time to discuss this because I know you cover this in a lot of your topics, in your music, mm -hmm. and this is something that you are also now an expert at, is body dysmorphia. And I think, oh, mm. is there ever a woman that you know that loves what they look like? What exactly is body dysmorphia? Well, I think body dysmorphia is that you have a completely skewed view of what you look like versus yeah. what the world sees you as. Yeah. And it's definitely rooted in self-love or lack of self-love and self-respect. And, you know, from a very young age, uh, not having had a father, he abandoned us and then being rooted in an abusive relationship. I really saw myself when I looked at in the mirror as something completely different to what was being reflected back at me. Yeah. And if you look at things like anorexia or bulimia, all those, it, it's the same type of thing. How can you identify it? How can you tell, like, kind of self-diagnose, I suppose, if you have it? Well, you know, I think we as women know when we are being unkind to ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you do know when you say, oh, you know, I don't... When it gets out of control and it's only dark and negative and yeah. horrible all the time, mm. then you do know you've mm. got a problem. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody has a bad day where you <laughs> look at yourself and you're, oh, don't, don't. But it can't be like that all the yeah. time. And if you look at yourself and, and also people around you, you need to yeah. actually ask for help around you. Like, do I really look this way? Am I, I did not speak to anybody. I was completely, yeah. uh, I wasn't able to express to anybody that I, you know, that you felt, felt way. that yeah. way. So. Why was it something that you felt that, you, that why, why did you cover it, I suppose, in some of the themes of your, in your show? Well, for me, it's mostly because you know, as women, there's so much expected of us. And yeah. there's so many images projected of what the perfect woman should be. Yeah. Not just, you know, how you look, but how you should feel, how you should handle certain things. And so for me, I'm very, I'm careful not to give people answers, mm. but to just highlight that, you know what, this is not normal. We were never meant to doubt ourselves this no. much. We were never meant to, to think we're ugly. You know, mm. even yeah. if I'm not telling you, hey, this is the solution, I'm telling you this life yeah. was never meant to be like this for yeah. you. Just remember that every single day. Yeah. Sometimes I think I have the opposite of body dysmorphia because sometimes I'm too skinny, sometimes I'm too... But then often I look in the mirror and I go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but how do you... That's healthy. Yes, Lynette, what kind of work it's does normal, Croc do, Chuck do to ensure that every child, doesn't matter what you're going through, yeah. has those moments to be like, yeah. look, I might be different but I'm unique in my own skin yeah. and, and I'm made, still okay with and that. And I'm yeah. more than okay with that. Yeah, I think we cannot achieve it without the help of our staff and our amazing mm. volunteers. Mm. And they spend a lot of time with the kids to remind them that even if they lose their hair during the chemotherapy, that you are still loved, that you yes. are still mm. precious, mm. and that you should still accept yourself as you are. And that how you look outwardly does not define you. Mm. That The thing that defines you is, is who you are on the inside. And it's very important because specifically specifically teenagers, it's easy to become depressed once they have lost their hair and they're not seem acceptable in society. Mm -hmm. And you are still precious, you are still beautiful. And that is important to remind them of, of that, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sam, you've decided to start an NGO. You're kind of running with this. Why was that important to you? Well, that was many years ago and the NGO was, was to help cancer patients access treatment. And in fact, I actually helped um, CHOC mm -hmm. with a lot of their patients, um, you know, and that was that was a fight that was I want to go to war mm. and I was very angry back then and mm. I think I was also you know compensating for the fact that I wasn't very happy inside so I needed to go out and fight now the message is one more of being feminine and embracing your femininity I mean I have one breast I don't wear a prosthesis anymore I realize and I don't wear wigs and, and speaking exactly what you're saying like the media pushes boobs and hair you know it's mm. boobs and hair and then all of a sudden mm. I had one boob and no hair and mm. I was like okay well you need to try and find yeah. femininity that comes from somewhere but thank else. God you do this right? because you know how beautiful because you are just oh, like yes. this but but you say it's that so but it was a to journey to get yeah. there and I can promise you now I feel 100% yeah. normal the way I am now if I had yeah. to have hair and have a breast it would be weird because it's who yeah. I am yeah. I've mm -hmm. embraced the difference and, and the one thing I want to say to the viewers is 
don't look the same. Try and embrace yeah. what makes you different. Try and take something of yourself that people think is weird or wacky. Oh, what and a make beautiful that, message. Shame make unfortunately that we've thing. run out of time. Thank, thank you so much for being here today. You so wow, much. you're all so beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again tomorrow. Good night and God bless. <laughs>